So you want to become a programmer, but let's be honest here, you don't just want to become a programmer for the sake of it. Programming is a tool to achieve your goals in life. And for most people, the main goal is making lots of money. And for most people, 100K a year is an ambitious, but a very realistic goal to set. But no matter what you might have been told, getting to this kind of success in the tech industry is not easy and it requires the right principles to get there. The saddest thing is seeing all these motivated people working super hard to make their dreams a reality, but I can just tell that they will never ever get there because they are applying the wrong principles in their learning, their practice, and in the way they look at how to get into the industry. That is why you need to be aware of these seven guiding principles that all programmers who actually get to a 100k plus salary have implemented and that the aspiring beginners who fail and quit have ignored or just not been aware of. And they have massively helped me, but not just as a software engineer, actually also as an entrepreneur and in life as well as we will. Before we we dive in, one bonus principle of an effective programmer is being up to date with the latest tools, especially AI tools in today's world. For example, today's sponsor DID allows you to transform photos into AI video presenters at scale using a simple API. So let's say you've created a side project and you want to monetize it somehow. One thing that you're going to absolutely need is to have some sort of tutorial video to show your potential users on how to use your product. In fact, let me demonstrate this to you while I show you how to use DID. To get started, open up DID's documentation and click on the create a talk endpoint. Enter any script under the script tag. Then you can use an app called Postman to test out the request. First click on authorization and paste your API key in there like this with the key authorization and value basic space your API key. Then copy the endpoint, select post as the request type and type your script in the JSON body. You can change your speech voice from a range of options and choose what your presenter looks like from a list of speaker options and speaking styles or even upload your own. Then DID will generate your AI talk for you just like this. To retrieve it, copy the given script ID and send a get request to the same endpoint. Then open the result IRL and voila. Internet made coder is the sexiest YouTuber ever. Oh, stop, stop. So DID is a lifesaver for anyone who wants to shoot video content like tutorials or promo videos really quickly, but doesn't want to spend the time and effort to film these videos yourself. So if you would like to use it in your projects, you can check it out from my link down below. Thank you for DID for sponsoring this video. This first one is the most important principle of all, although we'll probably say this about all the principles. Anyway, this one's super important because it's related to how you're actually supposed to solve problems as a programmer. And knowing how to solve problems is quite important, by the way, because that is, at the end of the day, what programming really is. So I wanna tell you about the actual way you can actually solve any coding problem and find the root cause to any bug that you encounter. So let's say you see a bug and you see like a massive error code. What most people are gonna do is they're just gonna look at the error code, maybe just paste it on Google, paste Hasty on ChatGPT and just hope that they give them some suggestion that's gonna end up solving their bug or whatever without actually properly understanding what they're doing. And this is a big mistake. What you're supposed to do, and this is very practically how you solve problems, is that when you look at an error code, which you'll see a lot of, by the way, as a programmer, there's usually some indication of the line of code that is causing the bug. What you wanna do is just find that line and then just like follow the sort of path of the different lines where the errors have encountered and try to get to where is the root cause? What is the root cause of the error? And you finally find that one line of code. Maybe right now you don't even know what is causing that error, but you know that there is a problem on this line of code right here. And now you have essentially isolated the problem to this very particular point of your program. And you can look at that line and then ask maybe ChatGPT or Google, okay, what is wrong with this line? And try to fix it that way. When you do it this way, it might be a slightly slower way of solving bugs, solving problems, but you actually learn a lot more. You learn to discover the root causes of the problems that you're encountering. And this is how I think about when I solve problems in any domain in my life. Let's say I'm feeling lethargic during my day and I don't really know why. What most people would do is like, oh, this is how it is. Whereas if you're thinking through this lens of finding the root cause of problems, what you might do is like, 
think about, okay, what do I usually do before when I feel lethargic? And you might be like, okay, I usually have like a very carb heavy lunch for lunch, like every day. Oh, maybe there's something there. And then you maybe change it and you like tweak some of the inputs in real life. Okay, when I have a less carb heavy lunch, now I'm not feeling lethargic. So now you've found the root cause. You might learn about why it does that, things like this. And this is a really key way of looking at problem solving, not just with coding, but in life in general, of just looking at the individual problem and diving as deep as you possibly can to find the root cause of the problems, which is exactly what is gonna be expected of you if you wanna be a software engineer worth that 100K salary. To take us to the second principle, I wanna tell you about my time in the Finnish military. So in Finland, we have the military service that is mandatory for all men. You do it around 19, and it's basically six months where you basically have to do a lot of very, very difficult things. You have to be in the forest, wake up, it's 5.30 in the morning, it's minus 25 degrees where there's this much snow, and you just have to go and walk in some forest to where the enemy apparently is or whatever. And there's some things that you definitely learn through a process like this. The main one of which, which I've also learned to apply to coding, is that in any difficult situation, never helps to become emotional. It never helps to start complaining. The kind of people that you actually wanna be around in these difficult situations are people who are able to stay calm, who are able to take things slow, who don't get flustered. We can just look at the situation rationally. And this is the second principle that you wanna be able to follow because in your job as a software engineer, if you get to these hypersensions, a lot is gonna be expected of you. There's gonna be a lot of very stressful moments. And I'm telling you, if you just learn to stay calm in every situation, you're gonna get so much further than your peers who cannot do that. So when I started learning to code, there was another person who started learning at the same time. And at the beginning, we would always like compare our progress. We'd be like, oh, I've been learning this and this, oh, I've been doing this and this. And for a while we were doing that, but at some point I started realizing that whenever I was asking him where he was in his journey, he sort of tended to always be at the same stage and he would sort of start falling behind from me. And today he has completely stopped, whereas I am still going. And I keep thinking, why is it that I was able to keep going, whereas my friend completely stopped? And the conclusion I came to is that what most people who fail rely on is motivation. But actually relying on motivation, no matter how much you might have of it in the beginning, is the best way to fail. Because at some point, motivation is going to die out. There are gonna be moments when you really, really don't wanna do it. The only thing that is gonna keep you going in these moments is that you actually want to learn. Like you have to you have this infinite curiosity for actually doing the thing that you wanna do, be it learning to code or becoming like whatever you wanna become. So the third principle is to have infinite curiosity for the thing that you're doing. If you're not interested in it, like freaking find the interest, find the things that spark some interest, like some intrinsic motivation to actually keep learning about the thing because that is the only way to keep going when things get tough. But let's not get confused here. Infinite curiosity for learning and mastery does not mean that you simply start here and you get here in one straight line. It never works that way. The journey from start to success doesn't look like this. It always looks more like this, where there's ups and downs. And what most people think is that in these up moments, that's when the success is made. That is what differentiates the successful people from the failures. But I actually think that success is made in the downs, the very, very difficult moments, the moments of failure, because it's the moments of failure when you actually learn. And this is what the most successful programmers have learned, is when you are struggling with that bug, rather than complaining about it, see it as a moment of learning and a, a chance for you to discover something new about your program that wasn't working that you can now learn about and then next time you don't have to make that same mistake again. It's only when you choose to let the failure stop you that you truly fail. So just don't do that. So principle number four is to embrace failure. Another thing you must do is to quit being a complainer. So I went through a period when I read about the Stoic philosophy, and I promise this will relate back to programming in a second. The Stoicism is this ancient Greek philosophy, and the most important of the teaching, at least for me personally, is how they talk about things that we can control and things we cannot control. So in life, we have certain things that are internal and in our control, like thoughts, emotions, and actions, and things that are external that we cannot control, like events, like other people, and angry bosses, or the economy or whatever. And the thing about these external things, as much as they might affect us, we cannot do anything to them. We cannot change them. It still baffles me how most people spend all their time and energy worrying and blaming the external world for why their life still sucks. Like, listen, there will always be things happening in the industry that affect you. Maybe the interviewer was a dick. Maybe the economy does suck. But even if those things are true, 
focusing on them changes nothing. So the fifth principle is to always focus on what you can control, which in the case of coding is simply continuing to improve your skills. Now let me tell you something about what coding in a real company or a startup actually looks like. It's actually one thing to build personal projects, but a completely another thing to build things in the real world that you will actually be building at your real job. So when you're building a personal project, you might be following a tutorial, or you might have some like very basic, like very clear steps to follow. And it's sort of a very streamlined process. And if you expect the real world to be like this, then you're gonna be mistaken because in the real world, the thing that creates value is always gonna be building something new that might never have been done before. So what follows is that as an engineer to create value, you need to do things that have not necessarily been done before, which means that you might not have an exact tutorial to follow. You might not have exact clear steps to follow on to know exactly what to do. Every single day as a real engineer, you're gonna be in situations we have no idea what to do. We've been conditioned by the world and the education system and whatever. We're always supposed to have like very clear instructions on exactly what to do. And when you get into the real world and it no longer looks this way, most people just let this completely paralyze them. If you wanna be an effective engineer in the real world, you need to be resourceful. You need to have the ability to take a problem where you might not know exactly what to do and then go and dive online and just find the steps to do that yourself. And that is why the sixth principle is the ability to find things out yourself. Last but definitely not least, if you do everything else right, you will still fall short unless you do this one last thing. There's really no magical pill or hack or project that can suddenly make you into the kind of developer needed to get the higher salaries. Like that is just the cold hard reality. You can look at the process of going from zero to 100k developer as like a game. First, you learn the basics. That is level one. Then you perhaps build your first projects, that is level two. Eventually you get into data structures and algorithms and level five or whatever. The point is, whatever step you're in, there is always that one most important action or thing that you need to do next to make progress. And the truth is that nothing will get you closer to completing that step than just doing the work that is in front of you. You can never escape the fact that the work just needs doing. To become a 100K developer, you don't need high IQ. You don't need a CS degree. You don't need a certain age to be or to be from a certain country. All you need to do is to pick up your laptop, think about what is the most important thing that I can do today to make progress towards my goals. And this is the seventh and final principle. Do the work in front of you. And as long as you do that, whatever else you do, like eventually you just keep doing step after step after step after step, you will get there. Other people just like you have done it before. And so there's no reason why you cannot do it as well. If you wanna know what these practical steps are from zero to becoming a master programmer this year, starting right now, you should watch this video right here and keep these principles in mind from this video while you apply those principles into these steps. So see you there.